While the Empire failed to distrust and disunity, we proud men of Solund marched under our banner. With Solund restored, our army followed the Golden Wizard into the cursed lands of Sylvania. I will not lie. The chances of your survival are small. Some may even turn against your friends as living corpses. But you have my word that I will use my arcane gifts to ensure your bodies are given unto Moore's garden. This is the greatest reward, more than even gold, for the fate of your soul is an eternal concern. Fire! Vlad von Karstein's endless army of decayed flesh and bones attempted to break us, yet he fell short before the faith and bravery of Solon's finest. For the first time in centuries, Sylvania rejoined the Empire. Weary veterans returned to their families, while fresh recruits joined us. Gelt and I were joined by Grand Crusader Alstafel. He told us of the evil that festered in the north. The Plague Father's army swallowed the lands of his native Middenland, with even the wild wood elves leaving their domain to invade Null. We continued to bide our time, to build up a new army for the Grand Crusader to lead. From the first Solander reclaimers, Gelt and I picked Wolfgang, a Solander with roots in Sylvania, to become a captain. A humorless, but a reliable man. We were joined by another wizard, Otto von Walden, a student of Maester Bertram the Green, and ambitious sort. Curious about the winds of magic in nature, he has been delegated to the command of the Grand Crusader. Now, men of Sigmar, we begin today's story. After the Great Vampire War in Sylvania, Captain Otto and Gelt spent many seasons solidifying the borders of Solon and modifying their army. Gelt commissioned from Noln a Hellstorm rocket battery, named by the crew the Solon Sunmaker. With them came Solanders trained in the use of grenade launchers. In exchange for their crossbows, the Hawkeyes have procured rifles. And for the infantry, they now have more greatswords, joining the prestigious First Solon Braves. To form the backbone of our force, Gelt's guards have three additional companies. Before we can begin any proper campaign against the enemies of the Empire, Gelt must first retain control of his position as Supreme Patriarch. An upstart wizard has challenged him for his position, and he must defend the rights to his role. The victor obtains the Staff of Bolands, a powerful artifact given to the first Supreme Patriarch of the Colleges of Magic. The enemy wizard made a pretty poor choice. Our Hellstorm rocket battery is really the pivotal tool that we need to win. Check that out. Sure, you've got a cannonball, but look at what I have. They are partially obscured by the trees, but it doesn't really matter. We're still going to meet our mark, much like that. While they are being destroyed, let's have a look at our own plans. Right now, Captain Otto and Gel are flying out. The goal is to lure them into the open fields. There's one Searing Doom overcasted. If we get rid of their great cannon, they're not going to be able to do too much. Back over here, we have our Crusader, Gregor. He's on the front lines. Behind him is our artillery. And we're just kind of neatly arranged, waiting to move up. I didn't want their great cannon to have any targets to go after. If they want to attack Gelt, that's okay. That's one thing. But here they are now, just luring them over. They've got a few handgunners, but not enough to truly be a threat. They were moving a bit too much for my mortars to do a great job, but they do try their best. There we are again. They're running. That has got to be terrifying for them. All right, now as we move back, we're able to see that our infantry is moving up. Great swords on the front lines because I'm not worried about their handgunners. We're going to have our spearmen on our right flank. And over here, we've got some grenade launchers that are going to move over to the left flank as well. We've also got my bombers just waiting for them. My grenade launching fellows. Back over here, we have our captain and Gelt. They're just waiting. The great cannon crew, they're hitting these Demogriff Knights. The handgunners, they're falling apart. I could get more kills by targeting blobs of their infantry, but again, I wanted that gone early on. It really helps to minimize losses. They're not really moving too much. They're being commanded by a wizard. A wizard who is not really learned in the ways of war like Gelt. Gelt has learned a lot. He's done a lot. 
So we're back over here watching them just kind of spread out as they try to get over to us. Our flying units will continue to just really harangue them wherever possible. There is our artillery still going. Look at that charge bonus, 38. And we've got our grenade launchers right behind our infantry because they're able to shoot overhead. We want to watch out in the future, our current battle in, in the future as well, for friendly fire. But as it stands right now, they can shoot overhead and deal a lot of damage. And over here we've got, what, an Averlin Runefang debuff and a Plague of Rust. They have no melee attack. These Demigriff Knights are now being hit by a Greatsword group. They're losing a lot already. We're back over here. We've got great swords charging in. The halberds are still just destroying them completely. They're trying their best right now to even make it to the front lines. There might be some friendly fire, but hopefully it won't be too bad. They're still attacking. Most of their army is broken. Over here, we've got these halberdiers. They've moved a few other groups over to my right flank, and here's where they have a major army reinforcing. The wizard hired a bunch of cell swords. So now they're moving through the woods, which is a pain. I don't really have a lot of time to move my artillery away, so we've got to stay put, especially because I'm still fighting a battle over here. Here's a glittering robe enhancing our second Solon Braves. They're cutting through a lot of these infantrymen. Look at that. And back over here, I'm still using my Hellstone rocket battery to ensure that our enemies shatter. They're not just broken where they flee for a bit, but they're shattered so they never come back. Over here, our second Autos Bombers, 105 kills, 128, and growing over there. Back on the right flank, we can see that we've got a lot of different Outriders that are coming out over here to harass me. So my goal is to annoy them by just charging at them. They're not Pistoliers, so they can't just move and shoot from behind and all of that. So we're back over here again. My Braves are still winning. They have been debuffed by a transmutation of lead just to ensure that my great swords are maximizing their kills. Their wizard is still around for now. The great swords that they have, they're on fire. And there's parts of them over there and over here. Come on, get yourselves together. Now nah, I'm going to keep taking them apart. So my knights are going to pull back now. They've got a lot of crossbows too. They've got a little 15 general. My great swords are moving over here. My guards are holding. I've got hand gunners right behind them, and they're doing okay, but they're not nearly as effectual as my grenade launchers. We've got some Dimgriff Knights who, unfortunately, again, are charging from behind, dealing quite a bit of damage to my great swords, but they're too few in number. Now, here's a Searing Doom. The goal was just to kind of say, hey, go away, Outriders. I was hoping to deal a bit more damage, but it happens. My Knights, they're on the right flank. They are fighting some Spearmen. We don't want them here for too long, but again, they're keeping them busy so that I have time to finish off our enemies over here. We're here to gain the Staff of Volans. And so now that Demigriff group has broken. Gelt and our Warrior Priest. They were over here going after the Wizard who is now dead. Gregor has 11 kills. He helped us take out that Wizard. He's got Battle Prayers to help us enhance melee attack whenever he's close by and uses his active buff. My Hand Gunners, the first Solon Hawkeyes, 31 kills. There we go now. Here's a more cinematic view and a Searing Doom being casted into the woods. We're having to go after that general. He's still going to be a pain. Quite tanky, quite sturdy. Now, let's have a look. There's a few units who want to come back. So, here's what we do then. We keep our damaged second Solon Braves over here, where they're able to just rest up. My grenade launchers will go out and attack fleeing units that are only broken. Back over here is where I now have my artillery going after their crossbows. Four groups all moving in together. One group of spearmen are trying to flank me, unfortunately. My hand gunners are taking some damage from mass fire. And we come back over here to see that my great swords, they've been buffed up again. 60 armor. They're at 189. Nigh invulnerable at that point. Doesn't matter if halberdiers have armor piercing, they're not going to be able to do too much armor piercing at all. They're very tired, too. Now we're back over here targeting them with my artillery. We can see out on the map what I'm doing right now. These grenade launchers are in skirmish mode over 200 kills. 171 over here. Yeah, they're just destroying what's fleeing. And it's important to get them in that route, too. A lot of casualties are inflicted in the route. So my first Solon Braves, they are taking out this group of Halberdiers. It looks like now our rear is fine. We can just kind of chill out for a bit. My Knights are now charged again. They were just hit by a Searing Doom, these crossbows. And now they're being followed up by a charge. That's how you break four groups at once. We come back real quick to see that it has been a great battle. They have surrounded my poor spearmen, but my spearmen are very good. I've got some knights over here charging in now as well. 
Here they come, right in from behind. And that is an attack that they're not going to be able to recover from. Here's a transmutation of lead. They have zero melee attack. No one is able to attack right now. My handgunners are still attacking their witch hunter, who has three kills. I'm using my great cannon to go after their outriders who are still around. And I've got my grenade launchers out in the woods now, just attacking. You can see that everything else is broken. We have only a few enemies to go after over here. We have taken out their leader. We're all buffed up from our warrior priest. So we have a higher chance to hit. Having him here to enhance us is so great. Yeah, he's all bloodied up. He's just going to have to flee now. So we come back over here to take out what's left of their infantry. And that's what we've been able to do for this battle. These battles have been quite challenging. Quite challenging at that. I did pick up one modification that shows a debuff that you get from when you are fatigued. That way you're not having to guess. Okay, I know they're very tired, but what does that mean? They fight at less than full capacity, sure, but now you're able to see a lot more. Like over here, these guys are very, very tired. You were just able to see a little bit more. I just kind of have to try to get this over it if I can. Ah, it won't stick. I'll just show you just by doing this. Ah, better idea. Okay, yeah, see that? Very tired. And so now it's not that it adds it. It's just that you're able to see what it does. It's very handy. And back over here, the Empire Captain is busy just taking out these two groups of spearmen, and we have won the battle. It's over. There's our final charge. We now have our staff of Volans. Captain Gel and Otto live in rather precarious times. Over here in Whistleland, they've been taken over by Wood Elves. We're going to solve that problem very soon. For our stance, we're currently in an encampment. That way we're able to replenish. Gel is currently level 29. My skills have changed up a little bit. There's a wonderful modification that allows you to reset your character skills one time for 1000 gold. I wanted to do that. That way we could focus a little bit more on our ranged capabilities. Pistol core for more ammo and missile strength. Imperial gunnery for more ammo for our artillery and missile strength as well. We'll come over here to pick up sharpshooter and artillery master. There we are. More ammo, more damage. Now, over here for Captain Otto, he's got only one point. We're going to give to him Devastating Charge. He's on a Pegasus, and finally, we've got our Crusader. I suppose I could have clicked on the icons up here, but hey, I'm here anyway. Impassioned, plus 12 to melee defense. He's got one more point to spend. We'll put it right over there into Wild Eyed. That way, he has even more melee attack. He only has right now a bunch of followers. Oh, speaking of new things Sigmarite over here, Arch Book of Asher, there you go. That used to belong to Gelt, but no longer, because Gelt has a proper item, a Staff of Volans. Pretty soon we'll go to invade on our following turn. Here's our secondary Servant army, led by Grand Crusader Ostalfo. We've got over here Captain Wolfgang, and also Crusader Luther Nimitz, in addition to Meister Otto von Walden. Now we've got two groups of greatswords, two groups of flagellants, Four groups of halberdiers, three groups of gunners, two for our horsemen, our knights. Then, look at that, a missile chariot, in addition to artillery, Averland's gift, and the Emperor's judgment. That alone is going to take them very far. He's got right now the Grudge Settler. That way he's even more powerful in combat. He's also got the capability to cause his enemies to flee in fear or terror. That's going to be nice to have too. It's going to be in the middle of the front line at every single passing. Now, a few of my veteran units, because I cannot put them into a type of reserve status to save them, I put them into another command. The command of Captain Heiner von Steingarts. He's got four groups of our Solon Reclaimers and also our Steingart Watchers. To me, it's imperative that we're able to hold on to our borders. That's what we're doing right now. And speaking of borders, Sylvania has been incredible for us. It's making so much money. In fact, if you have a look over here, Southern Sylvania alone accounts for 2,657 gold. That is going to carry us for a very long time. Now, we did mention the Wood Elves. However, they're not the only threat. Nurgle. They've also festered for far too long, in addition to the Beastmen and Greenskins. Up north, the Empire is not doing well. They need our aid. If we don't go over there, the Empire is going to fall. 
I've got 3,560 prestige. We've got over here minus four for our Imperial authority. If we have a look right now, Festus alone has destroyed four Elector Counts. It's really terrible. Nordlin is holding on. There's Grebitz over there in Marienburg. Karl Franz is holding on too. We did restore Wolfram Hertwig. He was destroyed, but I sent a single Lord to go rebuild his lands. Then we have Sterland. And finally, us everywhere. It's great. Now, let's go after the Elder Durthu. The Grand Crusader Astolfo could wait here and bide his time, waiting for Gelt to make the first move, but he's not going to do that. Instead, we're going to begin our war right now. Gristle Valley is going to fall. They have allies. We have defensive allies, and we'll go over that in just a bit. A very small garrison. We don't need to waste our time on a very small garrison. We also found here a Luxstone. It provides a bit of physical resistance, but more importantly, that's a lot of experience. There we are. We're not here to loot, we're here to occupy. Very good. Now, while we are here, we need to build up quickly. Or we could just pick up a bit of ivory. You know what? We'll do that. Because those elves could easily retake what we have here. We'll come back over here now and pick up Devastating Charge. Look at that, 96. That's a very large charge bonus. Now, Luther, you're gonna pick up Impassioned. We just need you to stay in combat and not die. For you, Captain Wolfgang, Deadly Blade. We've gotta build a hit in combat. So after that, we can't move again. We're just gonna have to wait. What if Gelt heard of what he did? Would he just attack? Why not? We were gonna rest up, but here's another small garrison. We're not gonna lose anything at all. We're gonna be able to recuperate either way, but we might as well take over one more area. We could return it to the Elector, that's true. Or we could hold on to it. I'm not a big fan of Whistleland entirely. Now, have a look at that, Demigriff Knights. We're not gonna use them yet, they're very expensive, but we do have them. Now, Gel is currently level 30, so we're gonna give to him Stand Your Ground, a major buff to leadership and melee defense. Captain Otto, going up again. He gets a devastating charge. And I our new warrior ready. priest, Gregor, will pick up Faith's Bastion. Award save, 20%. A duration of only 22 seconds and a cooldown of one minute. That's still going to save a lot of lives. Now we're going to be able to rest up here. Only our leaders might be a bit damaged. Afterwards, we'll go after more of the Wood Elves. They'll probably call in a few allies, but that's all right. Captain Otto and Geld have come to reclaim Wissenberg, the de facto capital of Wissenland. The Elector Countess Emmanuel would rarely visit and instead spend all of her time in the industrial city-state of Nuln. Gelt will prove to be a better leader for these hardy people. What's really interesting too is that Laura Lorne would like to trade with me. Alright, you're trading with Nordlin. We do need a friend up there. We're gonna take it then. Balance offer. And done. Now, we're allied defensively to Karak Kadren and also Karaz Akarak. There's a reason for that. The dwarves are not going to be in our zone of expansion, nor are they a threat to us. In fact, we're building outposts over in their lands right now. That way we're going to be able to hopefully get a few new units. Oh, they better not lose their capital. There's a lot of greenskins down over here. I might need to send an army to help them out in time, especially if they lose their lands. But we'll see in time too. Now we're getting very close to Dotternbach and Noln. When it comes to Grunberg, we are going to return it to the Emperor. We completed our research for our Engineers Guild providing more research. Now we're going to work on grain silos. That way we get more income from our settlement buildings. But more importantly, it's going to lead to one path. The Clergy of Sigmar. Once we get that, we'll be able to quickly get rid of corruption. And also Warhorse breeding to reduce overall upkeep for mounted units. Let's come back over here. The Wood Elves have a major I army led by know. Elder Durthu. Oh, that's a large army. We're going to have a fun time fighting that one. We'll go there in a minute. Awaiting Astolfo, unfortunately, is not able to reach Grimhold in one turn. So here's what we're going to have him do. We're going to have him move closer, but not Never quite there. We're going to stay right here on the border in case they come over there to Gristle Valley. Now, do we have anything we need to build? We do. Right over here, Fort Obersteyr. A town. That's going to be great to have. 
So after that, we're just going to move Ready. into a new battle. Our income is shot up too. Look at that trade, 3,253. Oh, that is a major army. They've got their garrison. Well, let's go fight Durthu, who has his sword and a few other common items. Level 18. He's going to be a tough one, but we are tougher. Captain Otto and Geld have come to face Durthu, an elder of the Great Forest, one of the oldest of the Tree Man Ancients. He first taught the High Elves how to shape trees and live in harmony with the forest many years ago. Through the Sundering and other traumatic events, he's become a warlike harbinger of destruction instead of the teacher he once was. The Wood Elves here are woefully unprepared to fight the Empire. We have artillery and they have a bunch of trees. There's our first attack, right there. And here's another one. Now, Gelt is using an overcasted Searing Doom on that group of archers right down the road. That's what we're going to spend our time doing early on. We're just going to select our shots carefully and go after these Glade Guard. So, if we have a look at our formations, we've got Gelt flying over here. Over to the left, we've got our captain. The goal is to really just see where they're at, to provide a line of sight. They're working as spotters right now. There's our great cannon. They've got a lot of tree kin, dryads. I also have a group of grenade launchers who are now moving in. Their goal is to harass our enemies. On the far left, we have another mortar crew. They're just going to be waiting there for a while. But here we are now. The dryads are moving forward. For the majority of my army, they're going to wait. They're just going to sit still and wait for their turn to shine. Now keep in mind, we've got some flaming attacks. They're on fire. They're taking a lot of damage right now. These are wood elves. They're not meant to be fighting us at the moment. Not if they want to survive. The bombers are moving back. They took out eight, but they dealt so much damage. Now they're going to drop like wooden flies. The captain is over here. See, they have some deep wood scouts. These guys love to hide, so we're going to get the captain to charge in. He's using a deadly onslaught. 152 for a charge bonus, 600 weapon strength. The Great Cannon continues to hit these tree kin. They're going to be moving over, trying to stop me. And see, we didn't really land any hits over here. They're lucky, but they're coming back out, so our next salvo is going to hit them. We've got our warrior priest on the front lines. Right behind him, we have hand gunners. Their job is just to get a few kills, to deal some armor piercing damage to these tree kin. Meanwhile, Gregor is just going to keep them out there. Hopefully they won't hit him too much. This is going to be okay, I'm sure. Another group of Glade Guard, pretty much wiped out. Come back over here, look at those Dryads. They're routing, they're broken. As for what's left, we've got our Mortar Crew. They're shelling. Here comes another shell. They've been rather inaccurate against my enemies, but that's okay. If we have a look at these Glade Guard, they're falling apart. They have one tree man. That isn't Durthu. And there's another Searing Doom. It only clipped them, but it's a very cheap spell. It happens. Still hit them a little bit. Now, let's go back over here real quick. The captain gets caught a bit. There's just a lot. So, we're just going to have to be careful and watch out for them. The Sunmaker is continuing to just rupture them. I mean, look at their numbers right now. 1,300, but they are Wood Elves. They have a lot of unique units. We're not done yet. Our own hand gunners, they're over here just still shooting into their lines. Though, they haven't been getting a lot of kills. It doesn't really matter, though. We just want them to at least hit them. So, we can hear that Searing Doom going off. We can always hear it going off right on top of them because we're trying to get the captain out at the moment. When it comes to the rest of my army, they're just waiting, but we do have our warrior priest moving in. We're going to have some hand gunners moving in later. If they catch me once, we take a lot of damage, so I try to avoid that, especially early on. Over here, our grenade launchers are continuing to just blow right through them over 50 kills so far. It's really good. Gale has charged in over here on the left side of the town. It's going to give our grenade launchers a good opportunity to take them all out. 
Now, they're being hit by a few volleys. That's okay. There's Gelt using another Searing Doom and the Golden Hounds. That one isn't overcasted. And here's a final transmutation. Look at that. They're melting. They're gone. We got them. All right, let's come back over here. The hand gunners are still attacking, but now they're going after a tree man. That tree man, well, he's bleeding sap. He's leaking all over. We're going to profit. We're going to have great pancakes. Our warrior priest is moving back. He's going to fight more in more prolonged engagements eventually. But right now, he's been great to have just to enhance our units and to also just assist. There. That tree man is falling apart. But the very brave Gregor, he holds firm. He knows he has one job and he's going to do it. He's going to set out and complete that one job. There we are. There's Gelt using another spell as he does. Guess what? A Searing Doom. Okay, we come back over here with that tree man now falling. We can check out what's been happening. The captain, unfortunately, is broken. He was caught between so many different units, but him being over here helped out a lot. It allowed us more time to just focus on other units. So, we have a few other range units that they're using. We look over here, we've got Deepwood Scouts. They are lower on ammo. I'm currently sending in my knights. My knights are charging in. We want them to go after someone. They're going to take some damage, but you're never going to avoid all of your losses. Uh, on the regular, here's another charge from our other group, our second Sun Knights, our Sun Riders. There they are now, going right after the Dryads, and over here too, going after the Scouts. So now we have hit them twice. They're going to send in some Spearmen. We're going to have to pull back. At some point, my units disengaged over here briefly. That happens. Maybe line of sight was broken. Maybe they just disengaged, but eventually they're going to go back in. Now, I've got my great swords moving over here. They're being hit pretty hard by, of course, enemy archers. Imagine if I went in without weakening their archers. I mean, their veterancy is not that great, but they're wood elves. They're very good at what they do. Gale has charged in. The goal was to block them off, to make them stay here. So the great swords are still moving in. The captain is coming back now. He just had to catch his breath. We come back over here to see what Gelt is doing. He's getting ready to help out a little bit more. We'll zip on by and have a look. So our second Sunriders, they're over here fighting just a few Treekin who are left. Now keep in mind, my Sunriders have a chance to, of course, use their flaming attacks. These spearmen were able to get two of my knights, but they're still weakened too. And there we are. My grenade launchers are now hitting these deep wood scouts. So we caught one point. We captured it. That's why I love our grenade launchers. They can arc their shots, which is what they did. And that's why we won that engagement. Now, my handgunners are moving up. Right behind them, we have all of our Gelt's guard. They're holding and they're waiting. Eventually, I'm going to replace every single Gelt's Guard with a proper Regiment of Renown. I'll be doing that as we go along. We come back over here to the right flank. The Captain, he's charged back in, going after a few of these Glade Guard. We come back, they're using a Flock of Doom on my Great Sword, so they're going to take some damage, but they're holding up. I've got two groups of Great Swords over here. We've got our second Stolen Braves and our first. Now, Gelt has 137 kills. Not nearly as many, but we're not just fighting fodder. Back over here, we've got our grenade launchers and these Glade Guard. They have one kill. That's it. That's all that they have. Unfortunately, we didn't really get them over here with that Searing Doom, but it happens. Sometimes I time it very well. Sometimes I don't. Our Warrior Priest, he's got 34 kills. Gregor, I mean, he's gone from just being a low-level aid to really just helping out a lot more the hand gunners they're finally beginning to stack up their kills the great swords are moving uphill but eventually we just want them to move back because right now we have the tools we need to go after them there we go again and it's a beautiful shot eventually Dorothy might want to come fight or he's going to want to give up he's made his choice look at that he has only four kills and he's leaving. There's going to be dire consequences for what he's decided to do. 
and we've got what for our Sunmaker? Over 300 kills. Good job, team. The trees have fallen. Who would win? An ancient tree spirit, thousands of years old, or some explosive powder? You decide. We lost only 38 men. We gained a lot of experience, and their entire army has been wiped out. They have no answer for our artillery when it comes to a minor siege battle. Here we go now. Occupy. Or we could return it. That is true. They would like me more. You know what? We'll give away one. You'll see later. A tree surgeon. Well, look at that. Enables flaming attacks when fighting against wood elves. That's going to be so powerful now. We've got, what, a new scribe? I could give that away if someone needs it. We'll come over here now. Are we a bit hurt? Sure, that's true. Gel is currently level 32. He's getting out there now. We'll get a taste for battle to enhance our melee soldiers. And over here, strength of hardship to make them a bit more durable in combat. That'll do it. Then Captain me. Otto, you get devastating charge. He's been doing well. Now. Gregor, shield of faith. Now that's what we need. That's going to help out everyone. Captain Heiner, we're just going to give you, for now, hard to hit. There. Everyone has what they need. So, we're just going to rest up here for a turn. I'll have to be a bit more conservative with our leaders in the battle for Nuln, but our soldiers are doing quite okay. What about our friends over here? Protector. Well, they've got one more turn to go, then they're going to hit Grimhold. But right now, the Wood Elves are not doing well. Welcome back, Eben. Now, we need a non-aggression pact, a trade agreement, and military access. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble for being here. I know you've got some money, so there we are. So be it. That's a lot more gold for me. Do we need to use the gold right now? No, we do not. But that's all right. Look at all of our trade agreements. Eventually, we're going to pick up a few dwarf units. For who? I don't know yet. Yes. The ancient orc spellcaster has declared war upon Geld. We'll call in our allies. If they would like to go fight him, that would be fine. The High King of the Dwarfs, unfortunately, is quite far from home. Which means Karaz Akarak is going to fall very soon. That's why we've moved our outpost to over here in Barak Var. We're going to have a military alliance with their faction. That way we'll be able to upgrade that outpost. Also, they're going to give me a lot of gold for it too. There's another dwarf faction we could ally. Current country Will right over here. Me, Perfect. I'll take the money. Well. If other factions want to ally me, they'll be able to do so. We're still building our outpost over here in Karakot Dren. We've got only one more turn to go. Gelt does have an interest in the dwarfs doing well. Is it because he likes dwarfs? Probably not. It's because the dwarfs over here are a buffer. If they survive, if they take over their lands again, then the Greenskins won't be able to invade the Empire. So eventually we're going to send down some men, but before we can do that, we've got to focus on one task at a time, which means the Grand Warrior Crusader Astolfo has got to get a move Call on. He's coming over here to the Grimhold. He's about to make it much happier. There we go. Unfortunately for the Greenskins, we're going to be visiting very soon. Now, Grimhold, we're going to turn you from a hamlet into a proper village. Done. We're also going to build up fields, not only for growth, but also casualty replenishment. It'll take me, Awaiting what, two orders. turns to get over here to Karak Nord. At rank 10 for the Grand Crusader, we'll put a point over here into Deadly Blade. It's going to be able to hit a few more targets. For the Meister, we'll put a point into Magical Reserves. If he's able to cast more spells, he'll be able to save more lives. We've also got a defensive alliance with Jufbar, so we're going to build up over here one outpost. Perfect. That won't hurt anyone. It's only going to help out. We've got the extra funds for it. Now, we're going to pick up a new friend. The Slayer Engineer. Save Malachi Makaisen from his stuffy teaching job. He's been out here having to deal with a bunch of wood elves. I feel bad for him. That poor dwarf. Now, Nuln, we're going to take over quickly and easily. The Wood Elves conquered so much, but they don't have the numbers to really hold on to anything that they took over. We've got them. We'll learn about him in just a moment. We could give them a bit more land, them being, of course, Whistlin, but I gave them one little village. Their fealty is only at two. In time, they may rebel. Then I'll take over that little village. We've also got a Talisman of Preservation. A ward save of 16% is really good. 
that negates all forms of damage. And here he is, Malachi. Oh, we're going to use him a lot. In fact, here's a talisman. Which army he might join, I'm not too sure yet. We'll look more at his abilities as he begins to level up. Just know he's a Slayer Engineer. He's got a big gun and he's not afraid to use it. We're going to have him fight the Wood Elves right now. Let's come back over here to Nolan. We've got to build up our fields. And our captain is on the way. Here he is, right over here. Heiner. Yeah, he'll be here in a few turns to help out. And what about you, Gregor? At rank 12, we'll put your final point over into replenish troops. Because we've got to replenish quickly if we want to do well. Do we need to build up anything? No, we do not. We're actually ready to move on to a new turn. Malachi is a Dwarf Slayer Engineer who was kicked out of the Engineer's Guild when his airship exploded, killing many of his fellow Dwarves. He hasn't stopped inventing. He's made a new airship, the Spirit of Grungni, and he spent time teaching at the Nolan Gunnery School and at their College of Engineers. Since the Wood Elves took over, he's used his crank-operated machine gun to survive. In the very beginning of our chapter today, Durthu had so much more land. Now, he only has Karak Nord. The Grand Crusader is here to take it over. He's been joined by Malachi. We only need to auto-resolve. We've gained a new magical item, Glittering Scales. Very nice. It's got a debuff to melee attack for our enemies. Let's occupy. That's one faction gone. We've gained a, what, Apprentice Wizard and a Hedge Wizard. Very nice. Our magical capabilities are much more potent now. The old tree is gone. What a poor sap. Now, at rank 11, we're going to give to you, Grand Crusader, one point into Deadly Blade. He's at 52 melee attack. For Luther, let's give him Wild Eyed. Perfect. For the Captain, Bow Seeker. Now, for Meister Otto, we'll put a point over into Earthing. We want a lower chance to miscast. For Malachi, his very first level, I gave him Explosive Bullets. You can choose either tree here. I chose Explosive Bullets. Later, whenever we get our Thunder Barge, what I'll do, I could respec and come back over here to Dead Eye. That way, we have more range. Now, I'm going to pick up Technical Enhancements, more armor, and more armor-piercing damage. Very nice. Oh, he's going to hurt people even more. Praise now, over here, Sigma. let's build what then? Some fields. I like fields. I'll take some fields right now. That'll work out. We don't need to build up anything else at the moment. I've got plenty just being built up. So, we're going to end our turn now. Gelt's getting ready to move down here to invade the Woodland Realm. We've got Captain Heiner, who's over here defending Nolan. And we just need to bide our time and wait. I'm just building up outposts and getting ready. Now, Reichland is actually doing well. Though, look at Karl Franz. He's only rank 5. That is really, really bad for him. But he's holding on. So we don't need to come to his rescue just yet. What a comeuppance, too. So Fendel is gone now. Evidently, he was defeated by Grom the Punch. And Grom is quite powerful at level 23. He's going to capture that area. Now, my big fear is that the Wood Elves will just come back over here and declare war on us anyway. That's why Gel is close by. On our following turn, he's going to invade. A crazy idea, sure, but he's got to do it. The Grand Crusader, he's also heading down here too. He's going to help out. We need more firepower. We're going to pick it up, but we should be good. When it comes to my income, I'm spending a lot on upkeep. We are making a lot from trade too. Eventually, we're going to pick up some dwarf units, though not yet. We could get our Luminarch. That would be nice. And Demogriff Knights are also really good, but look at that upkeep. We're going to wait for right now until I have a bit more money. There it is now. They're beginning to combine, so they're going to be a bit stronger. They want me to ally who? Nordlin? I'll do that in time. Not right now, though. Okay, Gelt, get ready. It's going to be a major one. The Grand Crusader, he's heading on down. Are we able to build up any of our lands? We can. Yeah, sure. There's Nuln. We're going to build a farm, and after that, well, we just need to focus on growing and also protection. When it comes to control, they're doing fine because they have a garrison army. We're going to take our basic walls. That'll do it. For Sylvania, we're going to build up our farm. And there we are. I'm just trying to grow as quickly as possible. Now it's finally time for Gelt to move in. 
Oh, it's going to be a nasty one. I could call in the dwarves. I'm not going to. Oh, they're allied to one Bretonian faction. That's really unfortunate, but no, I don't want any help. We're not going to bring them in. They're busy right now. Look at that. That's a lot. Let's go fight them all. Hopefully, we're going to be able to beat the God King, Orion. Gelt knows much about Orion, the king in the woods, co-ruler and lord of Athel Lauren. He is an immortal entity, but willingly chooses to be reborn with the seasons. Each year, the wild riders pick a young prince among their number, who will become the master of the wild hunt. A feared and tumultuous hunter, Otto and Gelt will have to carefully fight their battle to win. Thankfully, with the capture of Nuln, Gelt has brought with his army a steam tank. They were made by the College of Engineers, designed by the Tolayan inventor Leonardo of Miragliano. Only 12 were made in total, and 8 still survive to this day. Again, we're going to see that they're woefully unprepared. Our formation is rather simple. We have our steam tank over to the right. We have our rocket battery and our great cannon crew right over here. Right behind them, we've got all of our units waiting in reserve. They're going to go out there once it's time, but keep in mind, they have rather high numbers, especially for wood elves. Even if you miss one group of archers, they could still deal a lot of damage because of the fact they have great archery. That's why we've got to take our time. Their infantry is unique and strange, and we're just going to have to use our strengths to go after them. Much like that. Much like that. And so that group has been wiped out. The reason why we're over here on one portion of the map, and I will change it up if we fight on the map again, is so that they're all condensed together. If you've got a Hellstorm rocket battery, you want your enemies to be together, to hug, and they are wood elves, so they're probably hugging. Geld has 17 kills right now. He also provides eyes on the ground, just like before. He's a scout. We're only moving him that way, not everyone is tired. These war dancers, they're pretty tough. They only have 25 armor, but their weapon strength is really good. They've got great melee defense. They're able to dodge. They've got a physical resistance. So we just need to take our time now. Also, I'm not going to use my Hellstone Rocket Battery the entire time. I'm going to choose my shot. I'm waiting for a few of them here to just be grouped up. Now, they had one tower over to the left, our left and their right, but it's gone now. Hopefully, they're not going to be able to rebuild that. Not too easily. We've got a great cannon crew right over here targeting some more of their glade guard. And that's going to be our affair today, our habit today. They've got some Bretonians who are fighting for them, just padding their numbers. These guys are a waste of time, but I still have got to kill them. They're going to be a thorn in my side, but look at that now. They've got so many different units all grouped up. It's a rather beautiful map, too. If we have a look right now. We can see that they're just spread out all over it. There's only three points to take, and I'm just going to have to take my time. Now, Orion is a very scary character. Eventually, we're going to have to target only him. I'm going to use my great cannon to target him. His missile strength is quite high. His accuracy, very good. He's got anti-large capabilities. He could easily take out Geld. So, we're going to try to get rid of him. He's also unbreakable. He's a really scary character. But for now, we're going to take our time. There's a few dead wood elves over here. There's about to be a few more. Our grenade launchers, again, are doing a great job at just looking down and saying, Haha, you're going to have a bad day. There they are now. Lobbing grenades over. Sometimes, if they're a bit too quick, they're not going to really be hit too hard. But these guys, they're not quick enough. So, if we have a look at them right now, they're probably going to break very soon. A majority are now dead. Yeah, they're right over here on this hill. 72 kills, 82 kills. They took some damage from some blasted archers, but they were pulled back. Over here, we've got our hand gunners, and they're just going to be shooting at anyone who's coming down. It might even lure a few of them out. We're just continuing our same tactic right now. I've already laid out the overall strategy. Now it's just about the small maneuvers and movements as we take our time. If you don't have to rush, don't rush. You don't need to. You just need to get over here. Now, our steam tank I have on the front lines here. Because if they want to charge in, they're going to have to charge in towards the judge. Not only do we have our cannon, but we're going to be able to do pretty well in melee. 
Also, it's going to freak him out. Look at that. It's able to cause terror. See, they're all grouped up still. They're still being hit pretty hard. It's really funny to me seeing Bretonians over here. That's a very strange thing, but I totally get it. Now, we come back over here. We've got some more riders, some knights of Bretonia again, and they're just being hit. These grenade launchers are not nice for them. We're going to move them back eventually, but for now, they're doing a great job. Now, Gelt, he's been throwing spells the whole time, just weakening them. Here's where they have their reinforcements at the moment. Look at these eagles. These are going to be an issue for me. I've got to be careful because they do have what? Four of them? That's a lot. Oh, no. Well, we're going to have to make some scrambled eggs, so we're going to have to get them regardless. Another Searing Doom right on top of them. That's how the battle's playing out. Could I go in right away? I mean, that's true. I could. Would it be a good idea? No. <laughs> it really wouldn't be. The Judge. 114 kills, evidently very exhausted, that poor crew. Over here on the right, we've got the captain. He came in to just take out a few deep wood scouts. Oh, your buddy got blown up. Goodbye, Gerald. Oh, he's gone too, okay. He's like, I've got back pains. Well, now you've got no back. Gail is moving back up right now. Let's have a look at Orion. See, now I'm trying to get that great cannon crew to hit him. The fact that they're able to do so is really good. Not every shot is going to land, but we're going to try to make every shot land. Also, he's close to his own soldiers, so if they miss, so be it. Oh, you know what I'm using today. Our goal right now is to lure those eagles over so that we can take them out, because those are the ones who could really mess me up at the moment. We come back over here to have a look. The captain is close by. Our steam tank is going to handle these uh, knights, these questing knights. And we know they're very strong. They've been hit by an ability from our steam tank. Now they're burnt. They have a reduction in leadership. And we're using a transmutation of lead to mitigate that melee attack. They have very little now, so they're just being hit really hard. And look at that. The steam tank is shooting point blank. Gregor's moving in to help out. We want him to use his shield. We want him to use his buffs. It's going to keep us going the entire time. We've used Stand Your Ground, Shield of Faith, Hammer of Sigmar, all of that stuff over here. That's why we're going to be able to quickly break this group of questing knights. Actually, they held for a long time. That's scary. But they've been outgunned. Their silly little haircuts are not going to preserve them here. Nor will a lady. All right, so we're back over here looking at our grenade launchers. They're just going to have to play it carefully here, but 96, 86 kills. They haven't gotten a lot more when it comes to kills. We've got to watch out for their archers again because they could just outrange them and just really hit them hard. Here's part two right now. You won't see me fighting every faction like this, but as anyone who has fought the Wood Elves, you understand. You know what it's like. Oh, there's always been a kind of running joke just about how much I dislike the Wood Elves or having to fight them anyway. But here we are now completely outgunning them. Now, Gelt has 122 kills, but Sunmaker rocked them again. They're broken. They're all grouped up. Gregor has over 30 kills. He's doing so well. Keep in mind, he is still at a very low level, but he's doing so well, just wiping the floor with them. Another attack. They have been ruptured. They're running now. They're shattered. That's it. We come back over here to see that Orion has moved back for right now, but he's taken a lot of damage. Keep in mind, I'm being wary of him, and he's only level 8. They keep moving back. They're like, maybe, like lightning, <laughs> like the old wives tale goes, won't hit twice in the same location. Maybe the Searing Doom will be the same thing, right? No, no, we definitely are going to use it in the same location come back over here to see that we just need a moment to get everyone together they're going to take a breather our sunmaker has over 400 kills our great cannon crew 77 we're saving our ammo and preserving the overall i suppose stamina of our men there we go see we're just hitting a few of these archers they have zero kills right now we just need to wipe out this small group they're trying their best i mean they're being outgunned in their own glade that's got to be embarrassing yeah, we're back over here, just luring out a few more of them. 
we've got Knights of the Realm. I mean, they truly did have a lot of Bretonians moving in. Gregor, I'm just like sending him all over the map. He's having to go out there to the front lines, constantly just going after them. Now, the judge has over 200 kills. Look at that missile strength. Oh, beautiful. It's great. 582 total. We've got 467 for armor piercing. They get burnt. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just really debilitating. It's really great to have. So, we only have a few more cannonballs left for them. We just need to transition to the new phase of our battle. We're going to have to move up soon as we run out of our artillery munitions. Now it's finally time to use our final transmutation. But look at that. I mean, he took a spear and threw it that far. He's going to hit Gel and he's going to hit him hard. Now, that was an overcasted final transmutation. Orion is still around. It's going to take a bit. We need to catch him alone. But he's still being hit by that great cannon crew. Here's a few more Bretonians. A few less Bretonians now. And here we go. Another attack. It's got to be interesting to have been around for so long, but to know that, hey, everything is going to just fall apart now. We've got to do it, though. They're too much of a danger to us. If they were a bit more isolationist, then it would be okay. Or maybe if they didn't attack our lands, but they did. Yeah, see, look at him now. He is very nearly gone. We just need another final transmutation. Now, Gelt has taken so much damage. Look at his health right now, 1,184. If we're not careful, and I'm usually not, he could go down. We're moving up now. I'm using my steam tank. We're fighting some war dancers. But they're done for. Ooh, a woven mist. What a bad call. It reduces their melee attack in order for them to have more missile resistance. But we're fighting in melee. You fools. 918 health for Orion. 588. We're getting closer now. And it's time for another final transmutation. A miscast. I did overcast it. But there he goes now. Orion, the God King, has fallen. We're not done yet. We still have got to finish off his army, but that was my goal the entire time. Imagine you're going after some high-powered entity. You want that gone before you take out everyone else. Even though we've done a great job of doing that. I mean, dear God, they're all over the map. They're just dead. They're dead, Jim. There's your hand gunners now. They've moved up a bit. Oh yeah, they're dealing some damage. Good. Those eagles are still out over there. It's like they're waiting for me or something. They've got a few of their leaders too that are left. There we are, a glade captain and a spell weaver. So they've got some magic that they're going to use to damage my units, unfortunately. It happens. We're breaking the spearmen. Humans who came to fight for elves. Disgusting. Never do that. We come over here to see that we're just taking our time. I'm now moving out the judge to this open field. Where we're going to be able to hopefully get rid of those mounted yeomen. Now, we're pretty low when it comes to magic. We've got a few spells left. Look at Gelt now. 873. It's got nearly 200 kills. We're still hitting these archers over here. All it takes is a few. I mean, that alone. That got him. No barricade. Now they're just having to wander around. We come back over here. My army is finally moving up. We've got my Gelt's guard for one. We've got my Hawkeyes on the front lines. 46, 39 kills. We've moved up our Gelt's Guard now. They're going to be fighting their Eternal Guard. And over here, Gregor, he charged out. Captain Otto helped him out for a period of time. They're moving back. The Great Eagles are going to be on their way. We're going to have to watch out for them. Let's pull back now. Here is where we hold for a time. Oh, they're using a wild form to buff them up. And here comes the Great Eagles right now. One group is now hitting my hand gunners. We're going to have to help them out. Let's have a look. So they've got more armor, armor piercing damage, and base weapon damage. Thankfully, they're not too strong inherently. Gregor is now broken. He took a lot of damage. He's going to be back. He did a great job. He has over 50 kills. Our Hawkeyes are going to go after the Eagles. We're more of a Hawk fan than an Eagle fan. They're moving back. The Great Swords are here too to help out. 
And while that is going on, they're using a flock of doom to damage our poor units. And that, unfortunately, is quite effective. I mean, look at that damage. Took a lot of lumps. There's a Searing Doom right behind them just to weaken them a bit. We want them to break. And a Glittering Robe. 164 armor. That's why they're able to hold. That's why I love our Gelt's Guard. They're incredibly good. I love that they're just able to sit here and say, Hey, I'm not moving. You can't budge me. Okay, our Hawkeyes are finally back together again. Now they're going to focus on a few different enemies. Unfortunately, that Waystalker just took out a line of our Hawkeyes. Oh. Now back over here. A flock of doom dealing more damage. Their eagles are going to be gone soon. We just need a bit longer. Their glade captain is falling apart. Our guilt's guard, they're not getting a lot of kills, but they're holding. They're fighting against so many different enemies right now. And see, we're just kind of taking our time and waiting over here. My grenade launchers are pretty much out at the moment. Now, what I would have done a little bit differently, as we watch my Hawkeyes go after that eagle, all right, we're gonna have some poached eggs. Okay. Is that I would have had my grenade launcher save a few of their grenades and I would have moved them out over here to the open field. If the enemy archers are gone, we should have like free reign to go after them. Unfortunately, they have a few mounted yeomen, but my knights could easily destroy them. Let's come back over here. See, we are pretty wounded right now. We did capture one point and that feels great. We're gonna have to move up. And really take care of them. No, we didn't capture a point. I wish we did. I would have felt great. We caught the whole glade though, so that feels even better, right? The battle's over. Oh, now that's a great shot. Wood Elves fleeing, a tank driving right through them. We've done it. We've won. Okay, we did beat them. It was a time consuming and very challenging battle, but we did beat them. Look at that Hellstorm rocket battery. If I didn't have that, I don't know if I could have won. Now, that's a lot of experience. Oh yeah, we're gonna take over. We've got to recuperate. We're not done here. It's gonna be a long war, but we did take over the King's Glade. Geld's Glade now. Your Asai will not save you today, Elf. All right, We've got Wild Hunter. Not that great, but I'll take it. Lumberjack, we are cutting down wood. And we have a new province, a new base over here. So we've got a Night Watch. We've got a tier two village. It's not great, but it's what we have right now. If we can't build up proper walls, then we should probably work on control because we're going to need to leave very soon. Now, at level 35, Gelt has so much over here to pick up. We've got everything that we need when it comes to commanding people. I could get a few more things for that. I'll come back over here and work on my Searing Doom, which I love a lot. And my final transmutation, that too. I use it quite a bit. Pull the line is pretty handy. We'll pick that up too. Done. All right. Now, Captain Otto, two skill points. We could upgrade your Pegasus. That's okay though. We're not going to do that just yet. Need to give you a bit more health. Done. Now, finally, Gregor. He's getting better. He's doing better. Pretty soon, he's going to have soul fire. Yeah, one level to go. Let's pick up Fervor. There we are. He's going to punch people in the face. That's his goal anyway. So we're going to wait here for one to two to three turns. After that, we'll push on. Or maybe we could push on right away, depending on what army they bring over to the Oak of Ages. But that is a large garrison, so I've got to watch out. Either way, though, they're about to fall. Now, maybe in time, the Grand Crusader will come over here and help us out. If he's able to do that, then we won't have to worry for nearly as long. The Oak of Ages is the heart of the Wood Elf realm. Here, the yearly cycle of Orion's death and rebirth takes place. So deep do the world roots of the Oak run that spirits and elves alike use it as a means to travel across the world quickly. Malachi has a new level. That's great. Let's come over here and get Carrie a big stick. That'll work out. All right. Now we're going to want the Grand Crusader to go after the Oak of Ages. We're going to work together. It's only a garrison. I'm not too worried about a garrison alone. Low casualties, really? 
I was gonna have Gelt help them out, but evidently it was not needed. So we're just gonna occupy their Oak of Ages. There we go, you've got Lumberjack now too, Ostolfo. And a Scribe for Meister Otto. There we are. We have our territory. They're so much weaker. Put a point over here into the Bastion. A bit of a ward save, never hurt the Warrior Priest. Blade Shield, because we want him to survive in battle for a long Ever period of time. Vigilant. Two points over here. We do need Shield of Faith. Another Bastion again. Protect for the Captain, we'll the give weekend. him Hold the Line. Yeah, that's a good one to have. He's got to support his army. And here's a point into Blade Shield. Now for Otto, we hammer. want to pick up Arcane Conduit eventually. So let's pick up a point over here in the Dwellers Below, a pretty powerful ability. Warrior now, Malachi, I want that Center Blast Shell. It's a magic missile ability. It causes a powerful explosion to happen. Okay, put a point right over here. Let's focus on damage for right now. After that, I wonder, Gelt, no, he wouldn't be able to make it to the crank holes. Not right away, but if you look at what they have, they're already pretty weak. We might need to fight Grom while we're here, though. If I leave, that blasted Greenskin could potentially declare war upon us and take what we've conquered over here. It's going to take some time to build up. Champion the Oak of, of Ages. All right, so we get logs from it. We are now immune to attrition here, and we get a lot more income. That's money. That's money that I need right now. After we're done fighting the Wood Elves, we're going to be able to find a new target. Musion declared war upon us. We might need to get involved in Bretonia. I did not anticipate that, but it might have to happen. Now, Karl Franz, he's had an issue with a peasant girl. All right, a concubine. We're going to pay her. I'm not going to kill her. That would be wrong. All right, so we're over here now. A very small group tried to get past me. They died quickly. We've got some more technology completed, some more income, and cheaper buildings. Good. And Captain Heiner, he's got defensive drills, improving his men for four turns. Let's come over here. We're going to pick up Guildmaster Professors. Or I could come over here and get Council of Electors. No. <laughs> I don't really care for that. What I truly want is more income. That way, we're going to be able to afford I even more units. Ready. Let's come over here to the Karag Halls. Alright. It's over for them. I'm not going to waste your time or my time fighting every single garrison. Those are relatively easy battles. And they're gone again. There we are. Yes. Alright. What if I gave away the lands here to the dwarves? I kind of want to. Of that feels a bit wrong, but I kind of want By to. Sigma. Astolfo, are we going to get to see you in action? Let's see here. Oh yeah, we're going to have to. Very good. Now hold For on. Before Emperor. we fight, we've got to check him out again. He's ranked up. He's a bit stronger. Cinder Blast Shell. Oh, just in time too. We're going to be able to use that. Let's have a look around. We've got a tier 4 city over in Fildorf. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good. Now, what do we truly want here? More income for one. I'll take that. I need my wine market, you know. Alright. After that, what else do we need? I could just pick up paved roads for more income. That's one option. I could upgrade to a Temple of Sigmar. That would be pretty cool. I don't really need it. What I truly need right now is a Wizard's Tower. Or more importantly, in my view, one Imperial Academy, but we can't get that yet. So that's got to wait. I've got all of my mini buildings I need, so I'll wait and save up my money. That's why I like to have a lot of income. Now, over here, I have rebuilt Karak Bufdar. All you need is one lord to come on over, pay some gold, and it is all done. The whole goal behind that is to ensure that I'm able to replenish whenever I'm moving right through the vaults. I want to make sure that we're able to get right into the Wood Elf lands without any issues. All right, there we go. We're going to build up a guild over there. There's all of my money. And it looks like right now we have a battle at Vol's Anvil. That should be the final Wood Elf faction over here. Outside of Lord Lorne, but they're friendly to us. Are they still alive? Surprisingly, yeah. 
I've built a little outpost over here. They're holding on. They're trying to. Maybe they'll be able to do it. No, no, that is a very small garrison. They've got an okay army. Defend target. Listen. <laughs> yeah, just stay home. Don't move. I'll try to help out later, but I'll need to move through Bretonia. We've got Grom. We've got the undead. And we've got more undead. I refuse. Yeah, Heinrich. He's over here, too. It's like we have our own tabletop adventuring party. We've hired a few of our little minions to help us out. But here's our party right over here. They're going to move up very soon. It's a very interesting group. I'm using a warrior priest and one arch lector together. One, because thematically it works for me. But two, imagine you're going to be able to double up your shields of faith. That mitigates and diminishes a lot of enemy damage. So we're over here in a different corner now going after whatever we need they're going to be a bit more grouped up we're going to have to take our time as we do as we're a patient bunch which means i've come a long way i haven't always been patient right over here we've got our sigmar's lessons oh and trust me they're free there is no fee to pay we're just gonna give them out for free they're gonna learn one way or another what a great unit to have. They're just going to move around and then use artillery to break right through them. Man, I love them. We're back over here just waiting. See, we can easily move in to help out when we need to. Our party, they're going to move up right now. Otto is going to help them out. He's got some very powerful spells. We've got our Arch Lector and our Warrior Priest. Oh, they're glowing a lot too. And we've got Captain Wolfgang. You always need a good sturdy captain. They kind of provide the backbone for your men. They give orders. They keep the men firm and strong. So over here, we can see what my general goal is. You know what it is. We've got to get rid of the archer, the great enemy. You thought it was chaos. No, no, no. It was actually a bunch of twig boys who have string. We can't trust them. At some point, you think they would just break. Imagine right now. If you were part of some type of regiment or company and your leadership changed out every week, every other day, your friends mostly dead. You've got new friends. They're dead too. That is what is happening to the Wood Elves and they simply cannot sustain. That's why we've beaten them. And so far we've had like a major theme for every single part on who we fight. I prefer that. I like that. It means, hey, we can move on now. We have fought them. They have shown us what they can do. We have shown them what we can do. And we just need to, again, take our time. Our lessons over here are moving to the same position where we had our grenade launchers. They're only going to get a few shots in, but hopefully it's going to damage our enemies. Yeah, look at that. They're going to move right into range. I mean, we do have incredible range with our artillery. I love that it's mobile. I need more of it, really. Let's have a look over here. The shots are going out. Oh, they were unlucky. That's got to be terrifying. Imagine you're a wood elf. You've been isolated your whole life. Then, bam. You realize there's something a little bit more dangerous than your bow. It's a wake-up call. Or a sleepy time call for some of them. So they're back over here. We're going to try to hit a few more. We're going to move away because they know where we're at now. That's why we've got to be careful. I'm just waiting for another hit to rip right through them. I mean, they've already taken a few lumps, but... They could use with a few more. Yeah, they're moving right into the open. A really bad call on their end. We come back over here to see that we have indeed pulled back. 12 kills right now, but we'll move up later. The goal is just to avoid any prolonged exposure to their attacks. If we come over here to have a look at our artillery, we've got our Judgment, which has over 100 kills. Our Mortar, which has 12. We're probably going to get rid of our Mortars eventually or just put them in our Garrison Crews army. But we'll see. Largely because we need things that are going to land a few more hits and get more kills. The lessons are back again. And look at that. They're able to hit these elves from so far away. We're going to just move and hit them a little bit more. As they begin to pull back, we could even push up. Just a smidge. We got them. Alright, so we have 47 kills. We come back over here to see that we've got a few war dancers who moved up. Malachi is now on the attack. Let's check him out. He's got 34 kills at the moment. 
He's going to keep on attacking. We're going to have to be selective. His shots are explosive. And here's a spell. The dwellers from below from Otto. Oh, the trees are striking back. They've been betrayed. These tree lovers are like, no, I hugged you so much. How could you? And they were wiped out. They're being shelled. They were shot up by Malachi, and Otto got them too. Look at how many elves died. Ooh. That's going to leave a few marks. And over here, we've got our Arch Lector and Warrior Priest. Of course, we're going to use our buffs to diminish our damage, but to also enhance our chances to hit. Oh. Hammer time. The best time. We come back over here where we see that we need to target these tree Ken. They're tanky. They're just mobile tanks, and I need firewood. All right, so they've got some forces who are now moving in. There we go. A direct ability from Malachi. That got them. That really hurt them a lot, I think. They're on fire at the moment. They're moving back real quick. He's got 57 kills at the moment. A lot of missile strength. I mean, once he hits them, they fall. We come back over here to see that our lessons are moving in. 59 kills, but we just need to flank them. We just need to catch them off guard, get a good clear line of sight upon them, and let it rip. I mean, not a Beyblade, but bullets. Need to let those rip. The lessons had to move back, but what are they also doing for us? They're distracting our enemies. They're making them run all around. Malachi is continuing to attack the enemies who are approaching us. It's a killing field. See, the best part is here, is that once we're done fighting the Wood Elves, that's it. Unless we run into another faction that we need to fight, that'll be it for them. Man, these Elves really do love him. Look at that. They're trying right now. But, our team comes back in. Now we're all buffed up. We're just here to smash. Damage resistance. Grand Shield of Faith. 20% for a ward save. The Shadows Coil. A reduction in melee attack, but higher melee defense. We've got some more of their war dancers moving in, too. There's a lot of them. That's what I'm trying to target at the moment. Malachi, he's got a lot to shoot into. Oh, yeah. Right there. He just carved out a pathway right in between all of them. Otto is in there, too. We've got 124 kills and growing now. Another Dweller's below. That combination, reducing their speed through suppression and his spells, has been devastating. Look at that. They were wiped out. The combo that we have for the Grand Crusader, it's really potent. Now, unfortunately over here, a great eagle caught me off guard. I was too busy watching the fireworks, okay? They're pretty, they're distracting. But now, we're moving our mortar crew away. Not to be rude, but thankfully it was only my mortar crew. We've got some knights charging in. They're going after the great eagle. And here comes our hammer crew. Yeah, they can't be stopped. Keep in mind, I've been giving them our better items too. So even though they're at a lower level, they have a higher capacity to hit and deal more damage. So, Malachi. Growing in kills, he's at, what, 179. He is nearly out of ammo, 180 now. Oh, they bled. They are suppressed. Okay, my Missile Chariot. They've got over 120 kills. They're going after some Eternal Guard over here. They're just running back now. After we're done fighting the Wood Elves, that should be it for our more ranged, focused enemies. I mean, we're always going to use artillery, but after that, there should be a return to field battles and everything else. They're able to hit our handgunners. We're using entrenchment, so they've got more armor piercing damage and physical resistance, just to allow them a chance to sit here and shoot for a bit. Malachi has nearly 200 kills. Our team, they're moving up to go attack a group of spearmen. Look at that. The captain, 22 kills. Luther has, what, 44 kills. The Arch Lector, 41. Over 500 weapon strength. Very high melee defense right now. And melee attack from his buff. I mean, that goes down, but that Eternal Guard group, they're done. I've got to tell you, 
having so many different enemies to fight feels wild. There is so much evil out there. I like it though. It's good. Not the evil, but having to fight them. Okay, so he's nearly out of ammo. 245 for kills. We've got some war dancers who are just dying. They could be death dancers. The handgunners are close by, just shooting right into them. There's a bunch of smoke just wafting in the air. That chariot group has 168 for kills. They've moved up. They're still targeting a group of that eternal guard. We were like, you know what? What if we danced and died? Yeah, that's a good idea. We've gotten the majority of them, so we're going to move up very soon. And you're able to see tactically how you'll be able to completely demolish the wood elves. You'll want to fight them in their towns. In fact, it would behoove them to fight me on the field versus their towns. Even then, I would have a ranged advantage. My artillery is just too darn good. Oh, I love this combo so much. Having one Arch Lector and one Warrior Priest, it's great. They're charging in again. It's just a constant row of buffs. That's what you want. That's how you stay strong. All right, so for our lessons over here, they've got over 200 kills. They came out to play and our enemies, well, they were crying foul. We're back over here again. So we're going to push them up to go after that Glade Lord, Katra. Ooh, that was a heavy hit. Shield up. Let's go. As we go on and as we go along, I'm going to be trying different modifications. Just to really see what's out there, how it feels, and all of that. And for the Grand Crusader, he's finally able to fight a worthy foe. He's been kind of on cleanup duty, but it happens. It's been great training for him. It's been worthwhile. I'm glad they've been able to do that. They've been able to just enhance their powers. They've been able to just grow. And now they're ready to fight whoever. I really have no real fear of them falling apart. There's a soul fire. These Wildwood Rangers, they've been debuffed. The Whistling Runefang. Just got to slow them down. And look at that. We've caught one area. No towers for them. They're losing it. How do all of you feel about the capability to constantly build towers? Would you prefer it if you could like choose in the very beginning and then it's done? Or what do you think? I do know that it's interesting that regardless of our town's development, we still have wooden towers. But I suppose if you've got to rapidly rebuild them, there they are. But they could be an eyesore. I'm all about style. I like things to look visually pleasing, all right? I can't help it. All right, the Arch Lector, he's over here. Now the tree can, they're a bit of an issue. That's when I was like, okay, I probably need to move them out, but it's easy for them to get stuck. The captain is close by, just waiting there. The tree can, they're being hit pretty hard though. I mean, our hand gunners are doing a great job. Our great swords are being hit a bit. The soul's blades. Back over here is where we have more charging in. Malachi is fighting in melee. Now my sun riders, they're also charging in. Their goal is to go after some enemies and to flank some others, but to also chase after those who are broken if they're not shattered. Our lessons have 278 kills. The last holdout for the Wood Elves, and a dwarf gets to see them destroyed. It's over now. They're shattered. Yeah, see? There's so much damage dealt to them, they just kind of give up. They go, okay, I think we're done now. We've gained a Griffin Banner. It's been rather satisfying to beat the Wood Elves like that. In the past, oh man, having to deal with their kiting, having to deal with them being elusive. But it didn't really matter for this campaign, for this story. Gelt had their number. They're done for now. They're all gone. We've beaten them all. Now we've got a new enemy to worry about. Though, we have a much Praise more powerful army. Sigma. Let's have a look at the Grand Crusader over here. So now, what do you need? You probably need to get Benediction. Yeah, we're gonna pick that up. Wound Maker, Blade Shield. He's been able to last in combat for a long time. It's been great. Sigmarite Luther, Arch what about Victor. you? Being able to stack their Shields of Faith has been just great. One point over here into Fervor. Ever For Wolfgang, Victor. another point into Blade Shield. For Arch Otto, Victor. we'll put a point, let's see, into more spell casting, of course. Regrowth, we need that. 
And why not another one? Now, oh, Malachi. He doesn't have a lot of ammunition, but he's able to deal a lot of damage. Let's have a look over here. A rune of Grimnir. A flash bomb. Oh, that would be nice to have to slow down our enemies. To reduce their charge speed and their melee defense as well. Yeah, we'll take all of that. Do I need hit points and melee defense? Not yet, so we'll come over here instead. Alright, there we go. He's going to be able to keep my artillery going for an entire siege for as long as I want. That's great. So, Your Balls Anvil. We'll take over here a Woodman's Hut. If I give away our lands to the dwarves, one, that would be funny. Two, as you can see over here, this climate isn't really suitable for us. It would take a long time for me to develop these lands. All that I really get is like a little hub where I'm able to replenish and potentially move against other enemies over here. It looks like right now, Science. the Skaven Sorcery. are Bad. doing incredibly well. So I've got a few choices. I could come over to the west. I could fight Grom the Paunch, the Skaven, two undead factions up north, unless they're destroyed by the time I get there. And if I do that, I would need to move down over here too to fight at Castle Carcassonne. There's a bit of chaos corruption, so we know there's some chaos over here too. Then I could move down and take over Talea and Estalia, which again has been controlled by some rather nefarious forces. Oh, look at that. Wow. Karak Hearn, I've never actually seen them move out and do somewhat okay. I want them to do all right. My other choice is to come over here and to help out the dwarves. We could hold on to their lands, or we could just conquer all of it. Either way, though, it would be a very difficult war. Ah, the High King. He's got one little area, one little archway, but it's his archway. Mount Gunbad has a gold mine. That would put me adjacent to many other enemies to the east. It's incredible how many enemies we need to fight now. And we've got Azhag up north. He's fighting Karak Kadrin. So there are so many fires to put out. Now, option number three. We go up north and we take the fight to Festus. There's a lot of chaos corruption. It would take me time to cleanse the lands. But as you're able to see over here, that would be a full fight. That would take me a long time. Thankfully, it looks like Reichland is doing pretty well. They've got Kemper bad. We've got nine Filthy for Sterling, which means they might even join me. I'm not going to let them join me via Confederation. That would cause too many issues. I actually gave back all the territories over here to, what, Ostermark? Right. And they've been able to hold on too. They're not really that high up there. They wanted to Confederate, but I said no. Now, Let's have a look at diplomacy for us. We've got over here so many trading partners. It's incredible. It provides so much income for me. I've got trading goods. I've got friends all over. We import a bit. Sure, that's true, but we largely export. Now, I'm fighting so many different evil factions. Orcs, Chaos, even one Bretonian faction. It's going to take time to beat them all, so we've got to watch out. My reliability went down. It's unfortunate. I might have broken a treaty somewhere. My mistake. Hey, it happens. Ah, oh, look at that. More trade. I could trade with a bunch of Tomb Kings. I'm not going to do that, but I could. When it comes to strength, right now, the Greenskins are right below me. Yeah, they're at rank 5. I'm a bit higher at rank 4. Oh, they're going to be a tough one. Okay. So we've got to watch out for that power. The Broken Axe, that's Grom, they're at rank 11, they own 6 locations too, that means they have a lot, but the Wood Elves are done for now, we're going to need a few new units, we might even get a cheaper but new army, because we need to be able to move a little bit further out, right over here we've got Captain Heiner, now I've got a few other options, I could have, let's see, a Huntsman General, or I could continue using some manner of General of the Empire. We could even get a brand new one if we wanted to. So we've got some choices. When it comes to heroes, I'll probably eventually get a Witch Hunter. We're going to need some money. We'll take some time to rebuild our forces to patch up. Then we're going back to the war. Thank you for watching, everyone. Get ready. We've got a lot to do.
I'm very curious to hear about what direction you believe the campaign should go. We also have some new members of the community too. Welcome Kessler, Ricardo, and Michael. I'd also like to thank all patrons and supporters. Their characters are the ones featured in the introduction. If you join as a YouTube member or patron, you can get access to the rooms in our Discord community to name characters. Of course, I'll still take characters that catch my eye in the comments too. Then we had a lot of awesome super comments from Justin, Bart, TWB, Silent Wolf, and Dantis with Pandas. Thank you very much. Oh, and if you want to know what mods I'm using, I'll have them linked down below in the video description. It'll take some time, but eventually I'll have a curated list that I'll use as a backbone for future campaigns. I just need to try a whole bunch of new mods for right now until I figure out that perfect balance. Alright, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and do sub. Oh, and if you do sub, you gotta click that little bell.